In our series, Vlad to Dad, my CBS family is helping me prepare for fatherhood. So this morning, I'm getting tips on raising my daughter to celebrate her diverse heritage and feel comfortable in her identity. So we met up with our dear friend and CBS News correspondent, Weijia Jiang. She was born in China, and her husband, Luther, is white and grew up in the South. Just like me, they want their two kids to embrace their multicultural background. <laughs> On most days, Weijia Jiang is talking about the White House. Here in Washington. But today, we wanted to talk to her about being a mom to infant Jack Lee. You want to go first? And four-year-old Frances May, or Frankie, who she's raising to embrace their cultural heritage by means of language, traditions, and food. I think that's such a big part of raising biracial children yeah. is making sure that they have an understanding of um, the food that they eat, of the culture it comes from. We set out to cook a few recipes passed down to her by her parents, who owned a restaurant while she was growing up. My mom made me a lunch box when I was a new kid at a new school in fifth grade. So I'm so excited to eat this food. And of course, when you open the lid in the lunchroom, you just hear, ew. Right. <laughs> right. Some kids don't feel like they belong. Psychology professor Natalie Brito was born in Okinawa to Japanese and West African parents and was raised there and in the United States. And her husband, whose heritage is Iranian, German, and Italian, grew up in Saratoga Springs, New York. They're raising children together, too. I remember bringing school lunch boxes or bento boxes and having a lot of kids tease me about that. I recall sometimes throwing the food out even before you open it, because you don't want kids to sort of look at you and make you feel other. So I don't think conversations around culture or racism are that different from our everyday conversations. I think as adults and as parents, we sometimes feel like these are heavier topics and that you know we should wait to talk to them about these things. It may be hard for some to imagine, but as a kid, I was shy and introverted, a child of immigrants, speaking French before I learned English, having a difficult name for some to pronounce, often led to feeling like an outsider. I wonder if those conversations, parents should have them with children even before they start school. You know, it, it might not be sitting down and talking about, you know, anti-blackness or racism, but it could also be in the form of celebrating your own culture and diversity and embracing your own family heritage. Back in the kitchen, Ouija did just that. And those dishes that kids once laughed at are the ones that are bringing her the most comfort today, including braised pork and steamed fish. I'm just going to cut a little bit. We're going to steam it. Bon appetit. We sat down for our meal joined by Luther, Frankie, and Jack. What were you thinking about when you were thinking about naming your children? We actually chose Frankie's middle name first, which means uh, it's May, M-E-I, which means beauty. I remember in grad school, one of my professors said, you know, you're probably going to have to change your name because no anchor is going to be able to toss to you in the field and say, and here's Weijia Jang. And I thought, well, that's their problem. Mm, you did, Ouija. You yeah. thought that way. Yeah, so I never considered changing my name. We're very privileged in the sense that, you know, our children are getting to grow up in, a, in such a diverse place like Washington, D.C. You have to prepare your children for the day when there will be some kind of crude remark. Ouija is speaking to Jack in Mandarin. I love that. I realized that language is a gift that you can give your children. And so I am making much more of a effort to only speak Chinese to Jack. <laughs> Professor Brito supports this approach. It's actually best for language development. It's best for brain development. And kids who are stronger in that heritage language early on actually are better at learning English. So is this a smart thing to do for parents to think about this? really important for us to be having these conversations coming from multicultural backgrounds, but I think it's even more important for families who might not have multicultural backgrounds to have these conversations, right? I think conversations around culture, around racism, around discrimination are conversations that all families should be having, and if all families are having these conversations, it'll make it a lot easier for our kids to kind of navigate those experiences. It's so easy to get caught up in all the things you think you're doing wrong. But just being there and loving that baby is the only thing they really need. 
So, of course, I'm Franco Haitian. Uh, my wife, Marion, is East Asian. She's Chinese American. And one of the things Weijia and I talked about is language, obviously. So, we've got English to Chinese books, our French, French books. But when we were growing up, there were very few books about our cultures with mm, people exactly. centered. This is Freedom Soup by Tammy Charles. Uh, about the Haitian soup jamu, which ce celebrates Independence Day. And we just sent me this, Amy Wu and the Perfect Bao. These are books that did not exist when we were growing up as children. And now there's representation. This book is about being mixed. It's I love colors that. that yes. are mixed I love that. And come together to make new colors. I like what we just said. Language is a gift you can give your children. It is. And right. What a lucky little girl you're having. <laughs>